Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite quarterback hater, Robert Mathis, and you're listening to the For the Culture Podcast. This is the For the Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. Before we get into the Peyton Manning Hall of Fame show, if you guys haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Radio.com, iHeartRadio, Google Play, all your favorite podcasting platforms. Hit the like button, leave a comment, and turn on the notification bell so you get a notification every time we drop a podcast. Peyton Manning, the greatest Colt in franchise history, arguably the greatest quarterback in NFL history, and arguably the greatest NFL player of all time. When you look at the value of Peyton Manning, a five-time league MVP, nobody has more than three. Peyton Manning has five. He's a seven-time first-team All-Pro, the most All-Pros by any quarterback in NFL history. When you look at his career, drafted first overall by the Colts in 1998, going all the way through 2015, winning a Super Bowl championship for the second time with the Denver Broncos. He's a two-time Super Bowl champ. He's a five-time league MVP, which is the most ever, seven-time first-team All-Pro, most ever for a quarterback, three-time second-team All-Pro, 14-time Pro Bowler, was first-team All-Decade in the 2000s, and made the NFL 100th anniversary team. So Peyton Manning has pretty much every accolade you could possibly have. He retired first all-time in completions, first all-time in touchdown passes, first all-time in passing yards. He's since been passed up by Brady and Breeze, but he retired, and that's really where I like to grade guys where they retire at their respective statistical marks. And when Peyton Manning retired, he was the all-time leader in touchdown passes, the all-time leader in completions, the all-time leader in passing yards with the two Super Bowls, with all the MVP awards, with all the first-team All-Pros. And he really saved the Indianapolis Colts organization. I mean, the Colts could have moved to L.A. or they could have moved God knows where if it wasn't for Peyton Manning coming to the Colts in 1998 and bringing the Colts to the playoffs every single year from 2002 up until 2010 with 10 plus wins each and every season. Peyton Manning, one of the greats of all time. And we've been talking about this day since I would say 2003, 2004. It was inevitable that Peyton Manning would one day become a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I just think back to all the times I referred to Peyton Manning as a future Hall of Famer, as a future first ballot Hall of Famer. And tonight's the night Peyton Manning. Manning will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He will be enshrined this coming August, and you couldn't be more deserving than Peyton Manning. When you look at the accolades, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the impact he had on the city of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana, bringing the Colts a championship, and just all the accolades, all the awards, all the statistics, all the great memories we have of Peyton Manning, you couldn't be more deserving. Peyton Manning, a first ballot Hall of Famer. No question, man. And listen, I've been watching the Colts since 1982, and Peyton was a godsend, man. Um, really, for the years that I watched, it was just mediocre quarterback play for the most part. I mean, Jeff George came here, really didn't play all that well. Harbaugh was really the pinnacle of good quarterback play for one year. Maybe, I mean, maybe two. 96, he was okay but he was injured a lot. But the point is, like, he changed everything. He changed the city, changed a lot of people's lives, uh, made a difference in a lot of people's lives with the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital and all the phil- philanthropy he did while he was here or while he was in Indianapolis. Um, but on the field, man, anybody who listens to this show knows, second. I think he's second to none. I think he's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. I mean, he came into the league in 98. I watched every game the guy played. And I, I remember the first year I went down to the ESP, the now defunct ESPN zone in Baltimore every week to watch his games. And it was a long year, three and 13. I think he threw 28 interceptions and, you know, it was, it was tough, but you could see the talent there. And, you know, he was just a guy that worked his ass off all the time in his rookie year. It didn't matter. He was always working. He was always trying to learn and absorb stuff from everybody, whether that be a defensive coordinator on staff or, you know, defensive players, veterans. When he first came into the league, you could just tell this guy was built different. And then we got Edger in in 99, already had Marv, and they built a really solid O-line around around Peyton. Uh, He took off in a 99. I mean, it was on after that. I mean, he was he was special in 99. You could just tell this guy was going to be an amazing football player. And, I mean, like, Luke, you know this. I mean, I, I, there's nobody better than him for me. Brady can win a million titles. It's not going to change it. He transcends the position. He changed the way the position was played. Uh, he changed the game. 
And guys that do that, I think, you know, you look at Jordan in basketball or, you know, Johnny Unitas, a guy in football uh, back in the, you know, the 60s. They transcend the game. Doesn't matter what era they play in. You know they're gonna. You know, they would be great. And Peyton is that guy. A lot of special moments in his career. I mean, I'm not gonna go through them all, but for me, probably the pinnacle of his game were, was the New England game. But all, I mean, he had so many games where he was like, he would put up stats like he was. I mean, there's games where he's 24 of 28. I think there was a game in 2003 against New Orleans where. He was literally like 25 of 28 for 330 yards and six touchdowns. I mean, that that's insane. I mean, to think about that, it's just insane numbers, like video game numbers. And he did that multiple times. He did it against Detroit on Thanksgiving. He did it to Belichick's defense in 2005 when we beat the crap out of him in, 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 uh, in New England, finally getting that monkey off our back in the regular season. There were so many transcendent games, but for me, the one that stands out the most is the Tampa game. When we were down, everybody went to bed. I thought the game was over. And that was when you, really Peyton kind of etched his, I mean, his two-minute prowess and his comeback ability in, in the NFL annals. Because that, to me, was the greatest comeback I've ever seen. When you take into account, we were down 35-14 to 14 with four minutes to go against the number one ranked defense, the team that won the Super Bowl previously. And they just went up in down the field. Marvin had a huge game. It was just an absolutely electric game for, for 18. And that was what, for me, that's when I was like, this guy, I mean, I knew he was special before that, but up until that point, he hadn't won a playoff game and he'd kind of been on and off, you know, like 99, he was really good. 2000, he was really good. 2001 was a down year. We went six and 10 edge got hurt. 2002, we got Dungy, but it wasn't a super great year. But then 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2000, I mean, all the way to 2010 before he got injured, I mean, he was just tearing the league up. So uh, for me, the game that sums him up, the competitor that he is, the player that he is, that Monday night on Tony Dungy's birthday when he went back to Tampa for the first time, came back from a 35-14 deficit with four minutes to go and won that game in overtime. That's when Peyton Manning really, you know, that's when he, I really knew this guy is different and we're going to win a Super Bowl with this guy. And we hadn't won a playoff game, like I said, up until that point. So, and that was a big thing at that time of the indie media and, you know, Dungy hadn't won a big game. Polian ended up won the big game. Manning hadn't won the big game. That was the, that was all they talked about. And so when they did that to that defense, and even though we didn't win that year, we got to the FC Championship, and the next year, you know, we lost to the Patriots, I think, two years in a row, and then the 2005 debacle against Pittsburgh, which nobody wants to talk about. All those things, I think, really, th- those adversities build character. And, yeah, nobody wants to go through it. But the Colts went through it. They went through New England. They had to get through New England the way it should be, really, in 2006 to get that Super Bowl and to get that monkey off everybody's back. But the but but tonight's a great night, man. I'm so happy for him, his family, for all of his teammates, for the Colts organization, even for the Broncos organization. Because I, when he left the Colts, I always wanted the best for him. He had a really he went out the way he should go out with a Super Bowl win. Wasn't playing his best, but it didn't matter. And he did have a really great season there, a record breaking season. So I don't discount what he did with the with the Broncos. But this is a this is for the culture, and this is a cult show. And to me, he's always going to be a cult. So I know that was a long answer, Luke, and I kind of went off on a tangent. But there's so much that you can say about 18. And the the thing I guess I would say to sum up uh, Peyton was he was a winner. He was an absolute fierce competitor. uh, Knew the game inside and out. Smartest guy I've ever watched play, and uh, he transcended the game. Yeah, that's a great word, Jason. Pay Manning transcended his position and transcended the sport. The way the game is played today, the way offenses are designed today with the downfield passing attack, it wasn't like this in the 60s, 70s. And then the 80s and 90s were different, and then the 2000s, and now the 2020s. And as you look at NFL history, you have certain players that transcended the position and then other players that were great and deserved to be Hall of Famers but didn't necessarily transcend their position. So you look at Johnny Unitas in the 60s, he transcended it. You look at Dan Marino, I believe even without a Super Bowl, he transcended it. Peyton Manning 
without a doubt, transcended the position and the sport to the way the game is currently being played. Now, the quarterbacks are a little bit more athletic. They can run more like Rodgers, but Pay Manning was a baton passer. He took it from Dan Marino, and he continued to pass it along. And that's how games evolve. That's how sports evolve. And we're watching that right now with Patrick Mahomes. He's transcending the game and taking it to yet another level. And that's just how the game evolves and gets better over time. And the trials and tribulations before we landed Peyton Manning in that 1998 draft were brutal. We missed the playoffs a lot. And I'm kind of spoiled because I grew up with Peyton Manning. I grew up with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 win football. I grew up with AFC championships. I grew up with a Super Bowl when I was in the sixth grade. And my dad didn't. My dad told me about all the years of struggle. And that's what I think is so fascinating about Peyton Manning and our listeners. Our listeners, and Jason, we're a little bit different on this. Our listeners are either like me, they grew up with Peyton Manning, or they're like you. And there was a lot of struggle before we got Peyton Manning. And now we're currently in this quarterback purgatory that everybody's complaining about. It could be a lot worse because we saw it. Before we got Peyton, I wasn't around for it. I was becoming a Colt fan because of my dad in 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. So I grew up with tough playoff losses, but I was in the playoffs. So I grew up watching the Colts in 03, in 04, that brutal loss to Pittsburgh in 05. My first ever game in person was week one, 2006, Sunday Night Football, the Manning Bowl, Peyton versus Eli. And then that year we go on to win the Super Bowl. And at the time, I thought that I was a fan for a million years. I thought I had all these struggles. I thought that I went through all the ups and downs of being a fan. And now I look back and I'm like, wow, I really started paying attention in 03, 04, and I'm still a little kid at that time. And then just a couple of years later, we win a Super Bowl championship in 2006. Meanwhile, my dad was waiting 30 years for that Super Bowl championship. So it's funny, as you grow up and you start to look back and reflect, you see things differently than you saw them in the moment. And now I have a different level of appreciation now as we go through this quarterback journey as we look for our next quarterback because going from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck, we were very spoiled. We go from elite Hall of Fame first ballot quarterback in Peyton Manning to another elite generational talent. Everything that happens happens with Luck retiring at 29, but we go from elite talent in Manning to elite talent in Andrew Luck. And even this past year with Phillip Rivers, you have a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback give you a good year. You win 11 games and you get to the playoffs. So we were even lucky this past year with a one-year stopgap in a really good quarterback in Phillip Rivers. He wasn't in his prime this year, but he gave us a lot of joy this season winning 11 games. And now as we go into this hunt for our next franchise quarterback, because that's the goal to eventually either draft and develop or trade for somebody like Sam Darnold and develop into a franchise quarterback where you could bring a guy in, not for one year, not for two years, but you could bring a guy in and they could be your franchise quarterback for 10 plus years. That's the ultimate goal. And that's what we're currently looking for in Indianapolis. But the quarterback purgatory could be a lot worse. And it was a lot worse before we got Peyton Manning, who changed everything in Indianapolis. Yeah. And it's funny. It's not exactly the perfect time for me to give fans a teaching moment, but I'm, I'm going to try to do that right now, Luke. For somebody like your father, my father, and me, um, we sat in quarterback purgatory from 1982 until 19, basically 1997. We had Jim Harbaugh in there who had really one Pro Bowl year. Uh, I think he might have got selected to the Pro Bowl another time, but he wasn't nearly as good in '96. So we basically went from Burt Jones to Peyton Manning and just between a lot of really mediocre quarterbacks. My reason for bringing this up is right now where we're at currently with the current team, we are, you know, basically we're in purgatory right now. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what we're going to do, but it's only one year. Imagine being in it for 16 years. That's what your father went through. That's what I went through. I wrote a tweet the other day that Colt fans are spoiled by great quarterback play. And I believe that because I think a lot of these younger guys don't understand what it's like to not have a quarterback, not for one year, for 16 years. Okay. So, you know, we were bad in the eighties. We had no good quarterbacks. Then we traded a uh, hall for Jeff George, who turned out to be a disaster in Indianapolis. We finally make a run, a miraculous, one of my favorite, you know, playoff runs in 95. And we barely came up short to the Steelers. 
But what I'd like to say to the fans is, as bad as you think it is right now with the purgatory and where what are we going to do and blah, 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 it can be a lot worse. And we're my point is, like, we'll, they'll figure it out. It won't be as bad as it's been previously. Older people know what I'm talking about. And then the bottom line to that is going through that, from 82 to, to 98 with really just Jim Harbaugh for one year being really good when Peyton came here and started just, you know, just becoming this in, incredible football player. It made me appreciate things. Like there's a lot of people that say, well, Peyton only won one Super Bowl here. He underachieved like Kravitz. I used Kravitz wrote those articles yearly after we'd lose in the playoffs. Well, Peyton, another year, another, you know, another loss, another non-Super Bowl year, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. Super Bowls aren't easy to win, right? Getting in the playoffs even is not easy. The Colts didn't make the playoffs from 1982 – from no, from 1977 to 1987, and then not from 1987 until 1995. So two times basically in 18 years. It's not easy. So Peyton came to town. It made me really appreciate the game. It really made me really appreciate just getting in the playoffs and being in the tournament. But it also made me appreciate that Super Bowl. When we finally won that Super Bowl, it's one of the happiest nights of my life. I cried like a baby. I'm not afraid to admit it. I was so proud to be a Colts fan because I had lived through so much bad football. And to see them hoist that Lombardi and the way that they did it, they never quit. They kept persevering. And the reason they did that is two things. Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy. Those two guys were the leaders of that football team, and they would not let them be overcome by adversity. And if you remember in the Super Bowl year, Luke, and I know you do remember this, we were terrible down the stretch of that year. We lost three or four to some really bad teams. There was a Jacksonville game where we gave up 6 million yards. I mean, it was 375, but it could have been 600 yards for all we know. I mean, it was horrible. The end zone kept getting in the way. Yeah, basically. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, a lot of people were very upset, rightfully so. But Dungy always kept with that, that steady demeanor. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Got 21 back in the playoffs. And, it, you know, we just got hot. And we went to the Super Bowl. And we won it. Was that our best team? No. Arguably, for me, 2005 was the best Colts team. But my point is, Peyton was super competitive. He always fought. He always fought till the end. And having him fight for us for all those years, man, I couldn't be more proud to be a fan of him because of the person and the man that he is, the kind of football player he was, but he really made me appreciate great quarterback play because I'd lived through so many years of bad quarterback play. That's why I'm not super panicked right now with the situation with that we're in because we have a great GM back in those days when, you know, when we were terrible, 82, when I started watching until basically 97, there was two playoff berths, I think, in there. Our GM wasn't very good. I mean, we had one decent GM. I think Bill Tobin was was pretty good. He got us Marvin, Tariq Glenn. He did a pretty decent job. But other than that, Jim Irsay was our GM for most of the time. He was terrible. So now we got a great GM. He'll figure it out. I'm not worried about one year or anything like that because one year is nothing compared to what a lot of older fans went through between Burt Jones and Peyton Manning. But the bottom line is Peyton Manning changed my life in the sense that he made me appreciate the game. He made me focus on the fundamentals of the game. And he, I, I finally understood that you don't have to run a lot of plays. You just have to run a few plays, but you have to run them well and you have to execute them. And if you do that, no defense can stop it. And that's something Tom Moore taught Peyton. And I've heard Peyton talk about religiously. So Tonight, man, I'm just really, really happy and proud to be a Colts fan, and I'm really, really excited for him. So many great memories, and, and I mean, winning his team in the 2000s, none of that, none of that stuff. Had, none of those. I mean, we were in the playoffs 2010 or 2002 to 2010. You know, three AFC championships, two Super Bowl appearances, one Super Bowl. Absolutely, would not have happened without Peyton Manning, and. Uh, the rapport that guy had with his receivers, whether that was Marv or Reggie or even Brandon Stokely when he was here. I mean, he was just an absolute workaholic and wanted to be the best. And in my opinion, 
uh, when Dan, Dan Marino retired, he was the best. Cause I thought I've always thought Dan Marino was underrated. I think he's the greatest pure passer I ever saw. I think Peyton agrees. I know Peyton's a big Dan Marino fan. And when they played for the last time in 1999, I, I, I really felt like, Hey, the Colts, I, I remember the game, the Colts won it. And over time, Peyton drove us down, got us a field goal. Uh, with like no time left. And it was in Miami and we, we really needed to win that game to get the division because we were still in the AFC East that year. And uh, I just remember we won that game on a last second field goal. And I just remember thinking, yeah, that's that's Dan Marino giving the baton to Peyton Manning. And then Tate, Peyton Manning took that baton and uh, five MB, MVPs, uh, you know, how many two Super Bowls. Peyton's rapport with our receivers. I mean, the way they worked, those guys all worked so hard. They all deserve to be like, especially, I mean, Marv's in the Hall of Fame, Edge is in the Hall of Fame. 87 didn't get in tonight, sadly, and I was very disappointed with that. But he will get in the Hall of Fame, and he absolutely deserves it. And th- those two had a great rapport, too. Everybody always talks about Marv and, and, Re- and Marvin and Peyton, and they, they have the greatest, you know, touchdown record of all time as far as the most. Um, you know, that might be caught someday by maybe Mahomes and somebody. But my point is, like, even – with that said, I, I thought Manning to, to Wayne was an incredible combination. After Marvin retired, I thought, you know, Reggie really stepped up into that one number one role and did a great job. And that was all, you know, him and Peyton working together or working and after practice and developing that 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 super chemistry. They already had kept it chemistry, but they had super chemistry after Marvin retired because he needed him to be that guy to, that he leaned on for those first downs and those. Uh, you know, those third down plays where they had to have it. You think back to that New England game with the game on the line, he went to Reggie. So just an outstanding football player, both of them. But Peyton, tonight was Peyton's night, and I'm really proud. Like I said, I can't say it enough. I'm really proud to be a Colts fan, proud to be a Peyton Manning fan. I think he's a great person. He's done a lot for a lot of different people on and off the field. But to me, and I'll think this till I go to the grave and argue this with anybody, He's the greatest football player I've ever seen. Wow, yeah. I mean, the argument could definitely be made, and you saw a lot more great players than I saw. I never got to see Jerry Rice. I never got to see Lawrence Taylor. But when you look at the Hall of Fame monitor, as far as quarterbacks go, because it's also very difficult to compare positions, to compare a quarterback to a wide receiver, to a defensive end, to a safety, to a corner, to a running back. Like It's very difficult for me to compare positions. But as far as Peyton Manning goes at the quarterback position, he has the highest grade out of any quarterback in NFL history on the pro football reference quarterback Hall of Fame monitor. He has a 250, the highest score of all time, higher than Brady, higher than Unitas, higher than Rodgers, higher than Favre, higher than any quarterback in NFL history. He has the highest score ever. And I think he's second only to Jerry Rice in all players. Plus, you take into consideration the fact that the quarterback position is the most important position on the field. So if you have the highest grade at the most important position and the five MVP awards go to prove that, that he was the most valuable player in the National Football League five times. That's just insane to think about. No other player in NFL history has more than three MVP awards. Peyton Manning has almost double that at five. So... The argument could absolutely be made that Peyton Manning is the greatest football player in NFL history, and I think he's the greatest I've ever seen, definitely the greatest quarterback I've ever seen from a pure talent standpoint, from a football IQ standpoint, and just from transcending the position the way he did. Couldn't be more grateful that Peyton Manning was our quarterback from 1998 to 2011. He deserves this award. He deserves to be going into the Hall of Fame, and he definitely deserved to be a first ballot hall of famer congratulations to number 18 the sheriff the greatest player in colts franchise history that's my man jason spears i'm your host luke diamond guys we'll be back this week with free agent news we're going to start to get into the in-house free agents and talk free agency as the league year is wrapping up super bowl sunday night and then we now head into 2021 and all the great stuff that comes with free agency and the draft and all that fun stuff this spring right here on the fourth culture podcast